they would take uh, the Mississippi flag or the American flag. Uh, I, I see groups such as these white supremacists on occasion carrying the American flag. Um, no one wants their image flag, whether it be the American flag, uh, the Don't Tread on Me flag, used in uh, a situation uh, by racists. Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant speaking out after our state flag is seen carried in Charlottesville. Now some state representatives requesting a special session to change the flag. WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Scott Martin. State leaders and law enforcement agencies are teaming up to spread the word about opioid abuse. Columbus was the latest stop for a series of town hall meetings on the issue. Within the past four years, there have been nearly 500 opioid related deaths. State leaders think one reason behind that number is easy access. They're working to educate the public and increase awareness. President Trump recently came out and said there are 142 people a day dying from opioid overdose deaths in, in the United States. Now that's the United States, um, but that's 52,000 people a year. That's more than car crashes and gun violence together. So this is a huge epidemic and a pandemic and something, something that we've got to get a hold of. There are treatment centers all throughout the state for those who are battling this addiction. State leaders say that finding funding for these program, programs is becoming a problem. State and federal drug agents arrest six health care professionals from across the state, including four from our area. Mitzi Ramsey, a nurse at Tupelo, Tupelo Area Assisted Living Facility, and Valerie Riddle, an AP, LPN at a nursing home in Itawamba County, both face a single charge of embezzlement of a controlled substance. Their bonds were set at $3,500 apiece. Cynthia Purvis, a pharmacy technician from Corinth, faces charges of embezzlement of Adderall. Another Corinth pharmacy tech, Stephen Parker, faces a charge of embezzling Norco. The arrests are the result of a number of investigations. These were individual separate cases that were worked uh, by MBN and DEA. It was five separate uh, investigations. Uh, the one investigation involving uh, the doctor in Rolling Fork, that was uh, he and his, and his assistant that were involved in that one, but the rest were all separate and individual investigations. Purvis and Parker's bonds were also set at $3,500. The man accused of killing his girlfriend and wounding her four-year-old son has the chance to make bond. Knoxville County Justice Court Judge Tim Gowan set bond for Marcus Gardner at $400,000 on the murder charge and $100,000 on the aggravated assault charge. Gardner was initially ordered held without bond following the August 1st shooting of Chelsea Pace at, their, at a Knoxville County home shared by the couple. Galwin granted the bond request following a motion filed by Gardner's attorney. Knoxville County jail records show Gardner has not yet made bond. For weeks, it's been a hot topic in Columbus. Will city leaders keep its current chief of police? Tonight, city leaders agreed that Oscar Lewis will remain the city's police chief. A packed crowd was on, was on hand during tonight's council meeting, showing their support for Chief Lewis. After deliberating an executive session, Lewis and the board agreed on a plan of action. Mayor Robert Smith wouldn't go into detail regarding the agreement in the plan, but he's confident they made the right decision. With the plan of action, I think the uh, citizens will appreciate uh, the, the plan of action that was agreed on among the, uh, the, the, the council, the mayor, and the uh, chief. and. Uh, you'll see an improvement within the department. Lewis has served as the Columbus Police Chief for almost 18 months. Taxpayers in Lee County had their chance to hear about plans for a proposed law enforcement complex. They were able to also ask questions and voice concerns. WCBI's Ali Martin was there and has more. In a different location. Most of those who spoke during the two-hour forum said they understood the need for a new law enforcement complex. The current facility is always at capacity and the building is in disrepair. Still, some were apprehensive about the estimated $51 million price tag and the tax hike that would be needed to fund the project. That would add about $50 extra tax for each $100,000 of residential property value. Our cost of um, health insurance goes up. Our 
house insurance, uh, groceries, cost cost of living in general goes up and when you add it all together it uh, it impacts uh, the people on fixed incomes. Others said the extra tax is necessary to give employees a safe work environment, ensure there is adequate space for inmates, and also to avoid early release of inmates. Right now all cities and towns in the county send their inmates to the Lee County Jail. None of the municipalities have space to house inmates. The alternative is scary because that means that you have to let prisoners go quicker than they should be and that means they're back on the streets doing the same things that they did before to end up in the jail. Longtime state representative Steve Holland said recent cuts to the mental health budget mean more patients are being placed in jails. He said the need is urgent. You might as well accept reality. Crime is not going to go away. I wish it would go down. You don't want your taxes raised. I don't either. But you've got to have a jail. Supervisors will vote Monday morning whether to move ahead with the concept. That is expected to pass. Then the architects will come up with the plans. And there will be a bottom line cost for the project. The supervisors will then have to decide whether they will issue the bonds themselves or call for a referendum. In Tupelo, I'm Allie Martin, WCBI News. Plans call for the current jail to be demolished and the new facility would be built on the same site with room for future growth. Turning to weather now, time to get a first look at our forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Hey Keith. Hey Scott, some showers and storms around our region this evening. Look at this great time lapse from Columbus. You can see that swirling storm northeast of town, some very heavy downpours even in the city in and around Lowndes County. That was earlier. Several other storm cells out there this evening producing, producing some heavy rain, but you know, we lose the sun, we lose a lot of the activity this time of year, and now it is all gone. Uh, there's one of those pictures from one of those storm cells near Una, Mississippi, one of those towering clouds before it all collapsed. Now, tomorrow, your Wednesday, we're still warm and humid, low 90s. A chance for a few storms. The heat index will likely be in the triple digits again. Your full forecast, got in just a few minutes. Voters hit the polls in for the special election for Alderman today in Aberdeen. Alderman Lady B. Garth resigned in June. Here's the numbers from today's election. A runoff will take place between Cloyd Garth Jr., who had 131 votes, his opponent, Doug Stone, who had 106 votes. Cloyd Garth Jr. will fill the seat for Ward 2. The runoff election will be September 5th. Voters in Alabama went to the polls today to vote in the race for a permanent replacement for Jeff Sessions. Former Alabama Attorney General Luther Strange, who was appointed by then Governor Robert Bentley to fill the seat on an interim basis, will face former embattled, embattled State Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore in a runoff for the Republican nomination. Former U.S. Attorney Doug Jones picked up the Democratic nomination. The general election is December 12th. The Mississippi Black Caucus is calling on Governor Phil Bryant to hold a special session to talk about changing the state flag. The request comes following the racially charged events in Charlottesville, Virginia, where white supremacists clashed with counter-demonstrators, leaving one person dead. Democratic representative and Black Caucus member Kabir Kareem is one of the state leaders pushing for special session. Kareem says it's time to have one and put the over, overdue issue to rest. Representative Gary Chisholm, a Republican, if the flag changes, it will be up to the people, not for the legislature. If that election would shut it up, and I do not believe that another election would shut it up, because I do think that the current flag would win again, and then they would still be talking about changing it. Governor Phil Bryan has said in the past any changes to the flag should be up to voters. Our own morning meteorologist Alex Puckett getting that great lightning right there in the Columbus area with that storm that was coming on through early this evening and our lows tonight on the backside of all these storms into the low and mid 70s. A muggy night. The full forecast is next. Our first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, tomorrow's Wednesday, the middle of the work week. We start out fairly quiet, 77 degrees at 8 o'clock by noon, pushing 90 and the low 90s in the afternoon with the heat index likely in the triple digits, a sultry and steamy type day. 
This is our sunset tonight from Caledonia. Look at that a mix of sun and clouds and some very heavy rain in northern Lowndes County. And there's one of those batches of storms and showers moving near the West Point area early this evening as well here on our Tuesday. So that's what we had as far as some of our viewer photos. I want to show you this cool time lapse from Tupelo. We were looking back down to the south southeast and you can see some of these towering clouds here in the Golden Triangle area and one last poof right there with one of those thunder showers and then we lost the sunlight, the heat of the day and all of that has come to an end. So we will have a quiet night. You can see how robust the coverage was earlier this afternoon into the evening but it's all gone. It will tend to flare back up a little bit tomorrow. The storms that will sustain themselves this time of year are really going up here across the high plains in Nebraska right now. Those storms will be rumbling for a while. Here's Futurecast tonight. Fairly quiet as we get into your Wednesday afternoon. We may bubble up a few showers and storms at rain chance tomorrow, about 30%. And as we get into your Thursday, too, same story, 20-30% coverage here. So uh, not a lot of widespread rain anticipated for the next couple of days. Really for the next week, we're broad brushing this 30% chance of rain. And that even includes the upcoming Monday, your eclipse day here. As we get into the early part of next week, we're going to go with that 30% chance of rain across our region. Now, don't cancel your plans. Keep everything on track. We are still cautiously optimistic to squeeze out at least some viewing of the sun here on Monday. We're hoping for that because we are actually producing a live special on North Mississippi CW4. That starts at 1 o'clock on Monday during the eclipse here in North Mississippi and parts of uh, West Alabama. Here's our forecast for tomorrow. A lot of low 90s here. The heat index most likely in the triple digits. It's going to be warm and steamy here for our Wednesday. And we stay in that same range as we get into your Thursday too. Here's that 70 forecast and no major changes. This is a typical July or this is not July. This is August. A typical weather pattern for the month of August. Highs in the low 90s. 30% uh, chance of rain each and every day. Lows very muggy at night into the 70s. And Scott, we're just going to be hoping for the best for the eclipse on Monday. Indeed. Fitness fans in Lowndes County get an update on a popular workout spot. More on that when we come back. In WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Kids in West Point are taking part in designing a new playground at Marshall Park. Yokohama Tire Corporation is teaming up with the national nonprofit Kaboom to build the new eco friendly playground. Tonight, kids drew des their designs on paper of what they want to see at the playground, picking the colors and different types of equipment. Both companies then work on finalizing what the player or what the playground will look like. Yokohama and West Point Mayor both say they're thrilled they've chosen West Point. It means a lot um, emotionally to us. We are very, very connected to West Point. It, this will be for kids 2 to 12 years of age, just, just the right age, and especially in, in this neighborhood, but uh, for all over town. Tonight was fun for parents, too. They were able to weigh in on what fun and safe equipment they thought the playground should have. The 2,500-square-foot playground will be built October 28th. The YMCA location in New Hope will remain open after all. The Frank P. Phillips Memorial YMCA Association Board of Directors made the decision in a special called meeting Monday. Concerns from residents and additional financial donations led to the change. Executive Director Andy Boyd says this move has given the YMCA more time to explore all possible options. Recruiting new memberships to allow the New Hope location to sustain itself is the biggest issue for the organization to resolve. Coming up, the tour visits Tupelo, and we reveal our week one end zone game of the week, next in sports. WCBI Sports with Robbie Donahoe. Well, three stops to go in completing our high school football tour. Tonight, we're going into 6A. Tupelo was one of the best stories from last year, but the Golden Wave, not letting last year factor into what they do this year. It's them blankets, our stop 58 of our 1660 marathon. WCBI 60 Schools in 60 Days is brought to you by Toyota, Let's Go Places, and Emerson Animal Hospital, where your pets are family in West Point. 
It was yet another record-breaking season at Tupelo in 2016 as the Golden Wave rattled off 12 straight wins and routes to the school's first division title in 17 years. But the gold ball eluded them blankets, so the focus for fifth-year head coach Trent Hammond as his team attempts to reach the summit is on the little things, such as effort and intensity in practice and in workouts. This has been a team that's had great attitude and great effort every day. It's, that's something we started talking about in the summer, that attitude and effort makes things what we want it to be. And so far this team has been one that's been a joy just to be around because our attitude has been there that we're out working each other every day. It's been awesome. And that's high praise coming from Coach Hammond who will speak honestly and truthfully about his team. He knows he has a special group returning for 2017 with the likes of MSU commit Jet Johnson, Texas San Antonio commit Peter Gray, and offensive superstars Stefan McGlon, J. Rock Williams, and Jordan Jernigan. But the focus for this year's team is on just that, this year. About 1st of July or so, or right back after the 4th, we put last year to bed. You know, we, we said it's over. But yeah, we could be confident that we had a great year last year, but that last year's last year. You know, we're zero and zero this year. And so we focused everything on preparing for this year and trying to be the best we can be. And I think that af that attitude and that effort kind of go hand in hand with an attitude of believing that you can and then coming out here and practicing with great effort, hopefully that translates into uh, what we were last year. And last year's success means no one will be surprised by what the Golden Wave will do this year. With a heavy amount of D1 talent on the team, Tupelo knows they will have the bullseye on their back. And they don't mind being in that position going into this season. I've talked to them last year, we were the hunter. And somebody else was the hunted, you know, or the prey. And this year, we're kind of a team that's got a lot of statewide press. You know, it's, we're, we're one of them. And so it's a little different thing. I tell them it's very easy to get at the top of the mountain. Now we have to have a whole different attitude to stay there. And uh, our kids have been there knowing that, hey, we're going to get the best shot from everybody we play as long as we continue to, uh, to win or continue to work and do what we're supposed to. It'll only get harder and harder on us. Tupelo will begin the season this Friday night with a major 6A matchup at the Flood Zone against fellow top 10 team Meridian. With them blankets on the high school football tour, Robbie Donahoe, WCBI Sports. 60 schools in 60 days with Tupelo High School was brought to you by North Mississippi Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Clinic, Timberline Homes, Van Atkins Jewelers, Farmers and Merchants Bank, and Zip Scripts in Tupelo. We're all ready for the season to kick off our week one Carl Hogan Toyota game of the week. I mean, could it really be anything else than Starkville and Knoxby? Third straight year, we're starting with the Tigers and the Jackets. This year, it will be in Macon. We'll be live at 5 and 6, previewing the matchup and Week 1. Plus, we have a Thursday night showcase game as we will profile Columbus at West Point. So, get excited of the season just a few days away. And lastly, big news in scuba for head coach Buddy Stevens. Another transfer quarterback is headed JUCO, and he's going to EMCC. Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year, Lindsey Scott Jr., he was uh, Gatorade Player of the Year from 2015, has decided to enroll at EMCC following his transfer from LSU. Scott signed his letter of intent earlier today, will participate in his first practice as well. As EMCC runs the exact same offense as his high school. You're seeing a video of him from a uh, high school all-star game before he made it to LSU. The 5'11", 205-pound signal caller will still have to win the job over others in scuba, including former Knoxby Tiger, Tamoris Connor. Our final end zone preview show is coming up tomorrow night at 6.30. We will preview 5A and 6A. If you missed any of our preview shows, either the 1A, 2A, or the 3A, 4A one tonight, they are on our social media pages. You can find it there or on our YouTube page. Just search WCBI end zone. We're all high school football from here on out now. So the season, we're, we're all ready to go. We're excited. We hope you are as well. We hope, we hope you can join us throughout the season for all the fun. That's it for sports. Last look at your forecast is next. Rain chances coming our way. Uh, some of you may dodge it. Some of you could get a pretty good downpour or two. Highs and low 90s. The heat index over the next couple of days in the low triple digits. Join Alex tomorrow morning at 430 for the very latest. And as we've been talking about all show long, all week long, this big eclipse coming up on Monday. It's We're hoping here. for the best. It's getting closer and closer. And we're cautiously optimistic that we'll squeeze in some breaks in those clouds and the storm. So just don't cancel your plans. Just get ready for it. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for joining us tonight. We hope you have a great evening and 4.30 in the morning. Okay.